Okay, with question number 7, now we make an entry into section 2. And in section 2, one or more than one options may be correct. So, this requires lots of attention. Now, what is this? Let us see. This is a very beautiful combination of, you know, properties of bulk matter and little bit of optics as well. A beaker of radius small r is filled with water of refractive index up to a height capital H. So, there are two things that we need to understand. The initial condition is this, the refractive index is 4 by 3, that is the condition. And the radius of this that has been given as small r. Now, this beaker is started rotating about a vertical axis with an angular velocity omega. And this is a straightforward article where the free surface starts forming a paraboloid shape. Okay, and small h is the you know distance between this point and the top point. We are considering the y distance, the height. So that is quite clear to understand. Now this is also given that small h is very much less than capital H. This condition will be helpful. The sort of approximation in the coming numerical, and the height is also very very much less than the radius that also has been given, the radius of the beaker. But there is one more radius in the question and that is, you know, that particular curved one with slight amount of approximation can be taken as the part of a sphere. So, that is now the linkage towards optics. So, based on this fact, what are the parameters that we need to solve? The first thing is that we got to relate capital R, small r with h, let us see. Now the first thing is see, this is quite a famous relationship, h is omega square r square divided by 2g, the relationship between height and the radius of the beaker. But in order to relate capital R, the radius of curvature of this, we need to be a bit clever enough in terms of figure and let us see that how it goes. You just try to have a look. If I say the center of curvature of this particular surface is here, then this is going to be capital R. And another interesting thing just try to see from here, if I draw a straight line and then this. Now, let us try to see what is the value of this particular length? This length is of course capital R minus of h and what about this? This is small r, the radius of beaker. So, another relationship that I can draw here is capital R square will be equals to this which is r minus of h whole square plus of small r square. So, that is the second expression and you solve these two equations, you would get option number A as the correct one. Of course, at one place you will have to put the binomial limitation that h is very, very much less than small r. You can do that, that is quite a simpler one. Now, the second part is C. Out of C and D, we need to choose the apparent depth of the bottom of the beaker is very close to. So, this is now the concept that optics will be utilized, the apparent depth. You know, with respect to this surface, we will consider this as the pole. This particular height, you know, can be taken as capital H that with all amount of approximation because this has also been given that capital H is very, very much greater than small h. So, that is going to simplify our life and on top of that, the option says very close to. So, that is a perfect valid argument we can apply. So, refraction at curved surface would be involved. So, what formula would be there? Mu 2 by V minus Mu 1 by U is Mu 2 minus Mu 1 by R. So, Mu 2 is 1 by V minus Mu 1 which is 4 by 3 and the object distance will be negative of H equals to Mu 2 minus of Mu 1 divided by the radius with the sign. So, from the pole upward you go, 
So, that is along the direction of incident ray that is plus r. So, this v will itself be the apparent depth and all you need to do is that put the value of capital R and you are certainly going to get option number C as the apparent depth. So, now let us go to the next one. The next one question number 8 this is again another very lovely question. Now, it is from mechanics work energy power and little bit of dynamics is involved. A student skates up a ramp that makes an angle 30 degree with the horizontal. So, now the student starts from here goes up and makes a round ok that is going to be a nice feat. After that let us say at the bottom with the speed v naught. So, the speed here at the bottom that is v naught obviously as the student goes up the speed will decrease. Now, further what does it say look and wants to turn around over a semicircular path x y z of radius capital R and here this is the case x y z that is the semicircle and the radius is capital R and y is the topmost point and x and z will be at the same level. So, this is how it comes this point is x this point is z and you could see the topmost point y is at a height h above from the ground ok. Assume that the energy loss is negligible that can be done because rolling is involved and the force required for this turn is provided by the weight. Now, we need to find out what are the options that we got to choose. The first option is you could see you know relating v naught with the height and with the radius. Now, just imagine at the highest point what is the force towards the center that is of course, the sin component of m g. So, that will be m g sin 30 will be equals to m v y square divided by r. So, that is the relation between the force providing the centripetal and the speed. So, this is a very straightforward one let us call this as equation number 1. And what about equation number 2? I can relate this v naught with this v y by using energy equation. So, there I will be getting the value of v y square equals to v naught square minus 2 g h that is a simple energy conservation and that is equation number 2. So, here you have two equations and you solve it it is a straightforward one option number E would be the correct. There are other options as well the centripetal force required at points x and z is 0. No, it cannot be because you know it starts turning from x. So, the centripetal force would not be 0 and the option number D. So, C is already ruled out and B was not correct either centripetal force required is maximum at points x and z and that makes sense because the entire centripetal force is required in the semicircle x y z and at x and z the speed is maximum I am talking with regard to the semicircle. So, radius being same in all x y z therefore, centripetal force at x and z has to be maximum. So, option number D is the correct one. Let us go to the next. The next is again dear rotation let us see what does it say uh, rod of mass m length l. So, here is the case the rod of mass m and length l is there and it says pivoted at one of its end is hanging vertically that is clear a bullet of same mass. So, the mass of the bullet is m comes with a speed v and let us see what happens after that gets embedded into it. Now, after that obvious the combined system would start rotating and the maximum angular speed omega m is achieved for x equals to x m. That means, we are talking about the angular speed immediately after the impact. Now, the question wants to decide for what value of x you know where should the bullet come and embed. So, that out of all permutation combination the angular speed would be maximum. Now, let us see 
Option number A and B is about calculation of angular speed. Option number C is about that point where the bullet should hit in order to have the maximum angular speed and D is the corresponding maximum angular speed. You know, in all this situation, angular momentum is conserved about the hinge. And now, if I write the angular momentum equation, m v multiplied by x is the angular momentum of the bullet initially. Now, the bullet gets embedded into the rod. So, this is going to be m x square plus of m l square divided by 3 into omega. Now, you should understand it becomes one system. So, that is fine and omega value now it is straightforward, it is visible. Option number A is going to be the correct one. So, if A is correct, B would be incorrect. Now, what about x m? That is a very simple thing. At x equals to x m, you could see d omega by d x will be equals to 0, the condition of maximum and option number C will come out to be correct. Now, what you need to do is that put this value of x m here, the corresponding value of angular speed would be the maximum angular speed and that is there, you will get option number D as the correct one. Alright, now let us go to the next.